All right. This is podcast number zero, basically. Intro to podcast. Can we start with our uh, with the news? The news. What's in the news today? You know, I I was looking at Target. Okay. What's going on with Target? Well, I guess they put a line that had uh, alternative transgender type or LBGQW gotcha. stuff in there. Plus, <laughs> and it offended a lot of people. And so I got to thinking about this, and I'm like, I mean, it's people playing dress up. And I I used to do or really like LARPing, live action oh, yeah. role playing. So you dress up in these costumes like a, like a troll or an orc and you have armor and you have a sword and you go out to battle. Right. People. Most people would think that was nerdy or crazy. So I think the target thing, I think it's just gender LARPing. Okay. People are just trying something new. I mean, it's a character that they want to play out. So I don't know, maybe people give them, cut them, cut them some slack. I mean, it's just like going to the party supply store and cut them. Maybe not kids. Right. Maybe we'll stick away. Stay away from kids. But I mean, it's gender LARPing. Gender LARPing. Gender LARPing. That's it. That's a new way to describe it right there. Banking, liquidity crisis, cash flow issues. Are we going into a recession? Oh, yeah. So I feel like they always just, the problem with the recession is that everyone just like keeps pizza. pushing it down the road. Pizza there. Yeah, we got some pizza for the podcast. <laughs> pizza and podcasts. Yeah. That's, that, could, that could be a name right there. Pizza and some podcasts. podcasts. Yeah, the, the, uh, the liquidity, the recession, I, I think something's on the horizon. But right. I think the best thing we could do is uh, maybe with this channel is help people to navigate it. I mean, yeah. we are talking about business and the mistakes people make and cash flow. This, what, you know, can we help people budgeting and cash flow? Well, and I, so I follow the like finance YouTubers, Andre G, and uh, you know, me, Kevin, Graham, Steph, and all that. And I think the hard part is that they've been saying like all their videos because of the clickbait titles, it's like, oh yeah, there's going to be a recession, but they've been doing that for like six to eight months now, yeah. so I feel like. But we get in this uh, pattern where people are just like, oh, there's a recession, there's a recession, there's a recession. But we don't actually know like which month it's going to be in, what quarter it's going to be in. So how do you like actually make the best work. decisions? <laughs> okay. All right. So now we have it. <laughs> there yeah, we go. It's like the frog in the water, you know, where you throw a frog in there and slowly Start. turn it up. Though I, I'm with you. People have been saying it so long that now it's like your recession. Right? Yeah. They're like, well, yeah, it's gonna happen, but two two thousand and eight was like that, though. Yeah, yeah. So two thousand six, it was peaking. Two thousand seven, you saw some issues. Two thousand eight, you had um, Lehman Brothers, and you had some of the. Well, in the movie, like the Great Short, uh, I feel like it was the minority that thought that it was gonna blow. Yep. Which yep. nowadays, now that we look, looking back, we have OA as like a. This is something that happened to us. We're not um, like we actually have like an example that that we can follow, like a precedent that we can look back to. And so, and now I don't think it's a minority saying there's going to be a recession. It's majority. most people are kind of saying, "Yeah, we got to do a correction." Yeah, I remember. I remember, like in the news. Well, the news people are crazy. They all have motives. They yeah. have a narrative. But I remember clients and people around me. I could not convince them. That we were going into a liquidity crisis or recession. Right. They would tell me everything was great. I still have a job. And then those same people, not even a year later, it was like businesses are gone, divorce. And uh, mm-hmm. probably one of the worst times in my life being as a CPA, just watching that happen. Right. That's one of my big motives for this. I don't want to see that happen again. Right. I want people to be ready, make right. choices and pivot. Because yeah. I, I think there are definitely like ways you can prepare for recessions. Absolutely. There are ways you can, I mean, um, well, bankruptcy. Yeah. People think bankruptcy is a bad thing. You know, we, we, we can't control the government's counterfeiting Ponzi Absolutely. scheme with our currency. We, we start looking at bankruptcy. Maybe we, we help people structure so they can carve assets off if they're going to 
Right. They're going to keep and the ones they're going to bankrupt. I mean, that's those are decisions right. often made. You can't control a lot of those things. I know there's a stigma on bankruptcy or somehow a mm-hmm. failure or a bad person, but right. I would rather see somebody keep their plumbing business than close it down. Keep their yeah. plumbing business and restructure the debt than close it down. Yeah, and you have to have a long-term perspective for that. We have to say like, okay, bankruptcy is a part of the process, but in the long term, if it creates more value than the bankruptcy, I mean, there's a reason that it's part of the legal system. It's right. not like bankruptcy isn't illegal. It's right. P- people like, abuse it for sure. Yeah. But yeah. It, it gets abused. That's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see clients structuring today while we're still in a maybe recession yeah. to get ready to have their assets clear of some of their questionable stuff, you know, like with the car loans we were talking about. Yeah. I don't want clients to pay off their trucks now in a ninety thousand dollar truck that they shouldn't have bought. Right. I want them to get that thing repoed and go buy a cheaper truck. And that's what I mean with decisions and cash flow. I didn't go from a nine hundred dollar payment to a ninety dollar payment. Right. And it sucks. Your credit's gonna get gained. It's gonna get repoed, but I'd rather you keep your business. Right. It's almost like you um, you have like a mode. And so there's like, when things are good, you have this mode for your business where it's like you focus on growth, you, you do this. And then when it's a recession, you kind of shift everything. Survival mode. And you're in that survival mode. Yeah, you kind of cut down to the bare minimum. Um, there's a game that I play with my siblings called Steampunk Rally, where you put together a vehicle and then basically, it's a, it's a board game. So you put together a vehicle and you have all these like dice that you roll to help you move more spaces basically. So at different points in the game, it makes sense to have like a huge vehicle and other other times you want to kind of cut it down. So you just have a few parts, makes it a lot simpler. I feel like that's kind of similar to like navigating a recession versus a, um, you know, bullish economy. I love that. And we could help them because we could say, hey, let's look at your business. Yeah. Let's look at the sectors that make the most money. So, right. you know, if you're a, if you're a framer or a trim carpenter, what type of jobs? Is it new construction, remodels? Is it certain, yeah. you know, certain diet? So if they divide their income up by different segments, those are the ones we focus on and we cut the garbage away. Yeah, because like obviously products and services are on a spectrum of like whether or not they're like a luxury good so that people are only purchasing it when it's when things are good. And so being able to differentiate which ones are which in a business is important. And because it's not always black and white. It's not like it's not like you're selling yachts, which is a luxury good, or edible know, beans and rice. Edible or... babies. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's more of a that's a necessity, obviously. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that, we can make a business. That's a good I mean, I I want to be able to break it down. If we if we were to start yeah. an edible penny business during, <laughs> during a recession, what would we focus on? Would we focus on right. You know, the ones that have the best flavor, we focus on the most efficient. I, I well, no, ones that last the longest. Yeah, you do us Secondary market. You can reuse them. Do we want to reuse them? <laughs> it's funny that you bring that up because I had a dream last night. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I had a dream last night that I had to wear somebody else's underwear. So Jody and I were going on a trip and my underwear got mixed up with somebody else's that gotcha. was there with us. Like my whole suitcase only had their underwear. And in my dream, so you had to wear a female. I had to wear no it was a female, I was male. I mean it wasn't one of those. You weren't like, doing gender like I was not gender, okay, I was normal. Gotcha. Although I would do it just for everybody's sake out there. So I don't we don't get banned our first I would gender <laughs> the first <laughs> But no, I had to wear some other dude's yeah. underwear and it was it was hard. It was. I woke up like it was a bad dream. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't know. I mean, that's maybe that's the yeah. truth behind a recession or a depression. That's like the one thing that when you go to Goodwill or whatever, you don't. You, they have underwear. They always do. Yeah. Do what, you trust it? <laughs> when, when that's the marker for a true depression is when you buy used underwear. Yeah. Or you go pantyless, you go commando. <laughs> you just go You're like, I'm just going to go jeans free because will. I can't afford it. <laughs> yeah, free will. <laughs> but to that point, when you're in your business, I mean, do you have to buy a new pair of underwear? Or can you buy a used truck? You know, if right. you, can you buy yeah. used tools? When people are going down, we have a liquidity crisis right now. You've already seen it in, uh, in autos. 
You've seen it in some restaurant businesses. You can buy equipment used. I mean, people, these are these are what we want people to do. We want them to think of it. I mean, can you tolerate wearing used panties metaphorically in your business? Well, and a lot of it has to do with caring about image. Because, like, people in their mind are like, I'm starting a business. They're like, let's say they do car detailing. They're like, I'm going to buy this huge truck that's going to hold all my car detailing stuff. And they're they're not really doing it because it's needed. They can just yeah. put it in this in a sedan in the junk, but they want to look like they have a truck. They want to look like yeah. maybe the advertising on the yeah. side of the truck. You could argue, but you I think you That's could true. still achieve that. I mean, you could buy a ten year old truck and get it wrapped, and yeah, it would still look nice. Do ceramic coating or something. Yeah, or mm-hmm. or I don't even care. Buy a truck that doesn't work and park it somewhere, and have it look jacked. I mean, you could have not even have an engine in it. And then you could drive yeah. a minivan around for your actual business. I mean, right. Yeah, it's it's very uh, secondhand underwear. That's what we're gonna call the, the business plan. Secondhand <laughs> underwear. <laughs> yep, the secondhand underwear strategy. Right.